and I'm. I think I lost. Uh, do you can you still hear me? That would be optimal. Yes, we can hear you. Perfectly, perfectly, wonderful. All right. Uh, now, now the, the the acoustics are even better for me, uh, so I'm not I'm not hearing myself double time. Wonderful. So, uh, um, congratulations for being here with me. Um, I'm happy to uh, uh, lead you through uh, a little course on um, presentation techniques, um, which will be a little bit uh, unorthodox, but you will see. So, first of all, I'll uh, I'll give you I'll give you some. Uh, uh, some uh, things uh, not to do, uh, things to avoid. Then I'll talk about the key to uh, a good presentation. And uh, then I'm going to give you the experience of uh, having a bad presentation versus uh, a good presentation on the same topic. And finally, I'm going to give you uh, um, uh, some, some take home points uh, in order so that you can implement all these techniques into your own presentations and have success with it, reach your audience. All right, so let, let's start with, uh, with the first topic because it's probably one of the most important. We as, as scientists or people of the scientific community, we're always focused on um, uh, getting ex people, our audience excited for our topic. And, um, the problem is we have a very spe special perspective on things because we've read and uh, we have uh, studied the fields uh, to such a degree that we have lost connection to reality. And uh, the result of this could be something like this. Uh, okay, now my technical things are not working. So uh, all right. So um, you see here on those, uh, you uh, you see here four examples of what you should uh, avoid at any cost during a presentation. So the first. I guess it's better when you're going into me. Yes. Can, can you see. still can you still understand and see me? Yeah. All right. I'll I'll just continue. So um, the first thing to avoid absolutely is to write out your own thoughts and to cram your slides with text. As you can tell, while you're trying to read the text on the right. You have absolutely no understanding of what I'm talking. Either you're listening to me or you are reading the text. And this is because our brain is not working on, uh, uh, on, on both levels. We, are, we only have one intake. Either it's visual or it's uh, audi uh, audi audible. So uh, it's only when we see pictures that we, uh, that we can process visuals and auditory. So. Likewise, it's a bad idea uh, to have something like this as a, as a starting slide or as a, as a result slide, because you, you are completely overwhelmed with the text and you have absolutely no capacity to listen to anything. And this is, this is uh, on purpose. You just try to read all of it and uh, I'm just continuing my talk and uh, you, you have no sense of what uh, what I uh, what I what I was trying to show you. So um, that's uh, that's a really bad experience for for the for the audience because it felt it, it doesn't feel appreciated. So the next uh, thing that you should absolutely avoid um, is to mix. Uh, different disciplines of presentation. So I would strongly recommend that either you're using PowerPoint or these 
these uh, technical uh, types of presentations or a whiteboard. I would suggest when you're very good at the whiteboard, when you're very good to develop a story on the whiteboard, then just use the whiteboard. Because otherwise you will have so much, you will have uh, some switching costs and this will always distract you. And it will not only distract you, but it will also distract your audience because they can, they, they can very much relate to your situation. And this is kind of awkward, right? Just like, like uh, your peers right now, when they set up the, the technique and it, it wasn't completely working, it's, it's not a good feeling for both sides. So uh, the audience feels awkward, you feel awkward. It, uh, it's, it's really, it's really not, uh, not, a, not a good impression for both. Uh, and finally, the last thing that you should avoid is to um, give your audience too much information. Uh, which is exemplified here by this uh, straddle. The funnel, so the, the funnel is the, accept, uh, is the attention of your audience. And if you lose the attention of your audience, uh, you are uh, uh, practically no longer communicating what you want to communicate. So mind the opening funnel, mind the size of the opening funnel of your audience, unless you want to... Uh, get the nerd medal um, uh, for which that would be a very good uh, way to, to do that. So uh, if you present much data, there's this, this is a common misconception in the scientific field that if you present much data and if you show cramped PowerPoints, which are very complicated, then you're a good presenter. The opposite is the case. The clearer and the simpler your uh, presentation is, the better. Okay, to 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 uh, hop on to that, and uh, to go away from the from the negative side. Uh, let me present to you what is the most important thing in uh, in order to uh, create a successful presentation, and that is uh, that is relationships. Unless you build a relationship between you, your topic, and, uh, and the audience, your presentation won't be successful. So the question now is why do presentations, why do interaction uh, fail? And um, you might have noticed I'm using a lot of visual cues. That's for a reason. Try, try, to, try to see what, uh, how, uh, how the information I'm giving you is working with the pictures. So uh, usually we, we scientists, we act like we are some, side, uh, some, some kind of a robot uh, full of data and facts and uh, eager to present all the data and facts. Um, so this is, it, depending on your audience, this might work. But uh, for the general audience, this might have a completely different effect. So if, you're, if your audience is sleeping through most of your presentation, that's not precisely a bad experience, but they won't get anything of your topic. So being asked, uh, they, might, they might say, okay, yeah, your presentation was good uh, because they had a good, good sleep during it. But it's much more dangerous if uh, for instance, you see these these two people here. They look very very critically. These people will will have a certain opinion of your pr presentation and maybe not a fair favorable one. So uh, there's uh, there are very simple ways to create connection between the audience and you, and you should make use of it plenty. So the next question then would be. Uh, if an interaction is needed, how can I touch my audience? How can I emotionally reach my audience? And uh, that's the beauty of uh, being a human. Emotions are mostly communicated through our faces. So when you look at this face, you in, you, in milliseconds, you have a relation to this photo. 
and you have a relation to the emotion that is pictured on the on the uh, on the uh, on the on the picture right so here's someone really unhappy very clearly and you are instantly connecting to this picture and the same is for this so you see, it doesn't really matter uh, what age the face has. It doesn't really matter um, what uh, what uh, what type of emotion you're communicating on it, as long as you are communicating an emotion. So this would be one way to emotionally connect your audience to your presentation. Uh, Another option would also be to, uh, and the question is always, does it move me? The moment it moves you when you are creating the presentation, it is most likely to also move the audience when it is watching it. So that's a, that's a good indicator for you. Does this even work? So um, there's, another, there's another way to induce connection which could be um, fear. And suddenly everyone is awake because no one counted on that in the presentation. And you have this, you have this, this element of surprise and you can utilize that to connect it with an information. So um, in the end, the successful presentation then would have an audience that looks like this. So you have people laughing, you have people relating to your content, you have, uh, you have people that are friendly uh, and that are, uh, that are in community with yourself while you are talking. But visual is not the only way to cre create a connection, of course, you have also your language and your what you're saying and the way you are creating connection with uh, with language is uh manifold so uh you could you could take the friend approach and say something like you know it's funny uh, i was thinking a lot about uh intelligence and i was thinking about how the brain works and whether we can really study it and I found this article and by doing this kind of relational uh, approach, you talk to the audience as if you know them intimately. And that uh, 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 immediately uh, creates a connection. Also, if you, uh, if you want to do a more formal presentation and uh, don't go for the friend strategy. You could take the uh, storyteller uh, approach, which goes like, do you remember the last time you, you were wondering about um, how the brain really works? It's, it's such a it's such a marvel and it's, it's so, so not working like all other organs. Um, and then in, instantly in, in this moment, you uh, have your audience considering and thinking uh, about your topic. And this is exactly what you want because that creates connection. So the other approach and even less retracted, less, less, uh, uh, less close. So we're going now from the friend is really close to the storyteller, which is a little bit far away. And the furthest away would be that you say something like, as we all have seen in this example, uh, the difficulty seems to be that we cannot do research on something we think with. So in this moment, you are doing a, a, a trick. You just include everyone else in the room to see what uh, you have seen. And you, you just uh, uh, state that for the audience, as we all have seen. That's totally different to our group has found this and that. That's, uh, that, uh, that, that creates a separation between your group and all the rest, including your audience. 
So the better uh, the better idea would be to verbally integrate everyone that is in the room. But uh, to come back to uh, to what is most effective, 